you will frequently run across other people in your area where if you know what they're doing, if they're structuring subject to deals all the time and you sit down with a seller and they just met with this competitor and you have an idea of how they're structuring the deal, you might change your offer to an all cash offer because you know what's going to trump a subject to deal. What, what are you going to tell the seller is not a good idea? <laughs> subject to, right? You know exactly. So if you know what your competition is doing, you have a competitive advantage because you can start to figure it out, right? These are just simple things that you can do to understand. Now, here's a, we're going to go through this and we're going to go kind of quickly. You guys ready? ready? All right. This is uh, very basic. And the reason I'm going through it quickly is there's a lot of people that I have already done this. Uh, but I just want to jog your memory. Uh, if you haven't done this, this is important. Before we start going out there and doing direct mail, before we start going out there and meeting realtors, uh, before we start, we have to have certain foundational things. We have to set our business up the right way. So I call this creating your marketing foundation. Uh, there are certain things that you must have, and I'd like you to write down a couple. You got to have a good website name that's easy to remember, right? You got to have a phone number that is easy to remember. You should spend some time early on finding a phone number that is very easy to remember because if you put it on all your marketing pieces, you're going to have a natural advantage. If your phone number is 555-4444 and you're using some sort of outdoor marketing, you think that's going to be advantageous to you? Yeah, you're going to have a 20% increase in, uh, you know, 20 to 30% increase in response rates just based on the fact that you're using a phone number, right? It's a great ex uh, phone number that's easy to remember. Versus another number that's like 555, or another number that's like 4962378. How many of you just remember that phone number? One person in the whole room. How many of you guys remembered 555-4444, right? Obviously, you can see there's going to be a, a response rate, a, a difference between that. So here's kind of what the foundation is for your business. Um, here's the points I want to cover. You want to, number one, is have a good business name. Uh, something that's memorable. Uh, there's a, uh, one of the most memorable business names that I've heard is, uh, there's a, a group out of Atlanta, Georgia, who buys and sells homes, uh, and their, the name of their business is One Hour Home Buyers, right? It's a good name. What does it do? It evokes curiosity from the moment you hear it. How the heck are these people going to buy a home in one hour? It, it conveys what they do. What do they do? They buy homes. Uh, if your business name is William Capital Partners, what does that tell you? It doesn't tell you anything. So these are just simple things. You might, some people may want to change what they're doing, right? Uh, one of our first business names that we picked out was, we picked out a business name that was just, uh, we called it Project New Haven. Well, that just kind of limited us to New Haven. So about two weeks into that, we're like, forget it, scrap the business cards. Let's create a new business name, right? Something that conveys what we do. Right? So what you want to do is you want to have a name that's memorable. That when you put it out there on marketing, it, it evokes an emotion that, that makes it memorable. 